our first session, which is how to specify a luminaire. Uh, and our first speaker is Roger Sexton. Roger. Thanks. Okay, so I kick off this quartet of uh, mini talks on um, uh, specifying a luminaire by talking about the light source uh, uh, itself. So my fellow speakers will come on to um, optics, uh, build quality and this sort of thing, but it seemed logical to start with, uh, with light itself. I um, have uh, split the attributes as you see, price, efficacy, color point, etc. I think it's a good scientific uh, discipline to do it this way, but actually they are all interlocked. So it's, um, uh, um, uh, I hope you see as my talk progresses that actually to look at each one in isolation uh, uh, does have some shortcomings. And another point to uh, uh, um, emphasize initially is that though I've called this um, a talk on lead light sources, you could use the same headings if it was any light source, uh, halogen or HID or fluorescent, uh, uh, etc. Maybe some of the attributes would change if you take fluorescent and lead, the temperature dependency is, is actually diametrically opposed, but the same headings would um, uh, uh, are still relevant. Okay, so let's kick off with the appearance of light. So this is what will uh, uh, affect the look and feel of a space. And uh, the industry uses a metric called uh, color temperature or correlated color temperature, if you talk about non-thermal radiators, to define the warmth or the coolness of, uh, of the light. So it's pegging the uh, appearance of the light with uh, the temperature of a thermal radiator. 2,700 Kelvin would be incandescent like, uh, 4,000 Kelvin more brisk and uh, uh, office-like uh, 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 lighting. And if you look in the, uh, the picture, the top right, this is uh, chromaticity space, the XY chromaticity space, the most well known in the industry, if not the most uh, uh, uniform. And uh, the white area in the middle is where this metric makes sense. It doesn't make much sense outside of uh, that white, white area. And the line that you see in the middle of it, this is called the black body locus. And this is, uh, if you like, joining together all the different uh, uh, color temperatures. So it's upon this line that manufacturers will uh, um, uh, uh, specify what's in their range, either with... Uh, tried and tested industry standards like uh, 2,500 Kelvin, 3, 4, and so on, or specifically what they produce to, so it could be 2,950 rather than, uh, than 3,000 Kelvin. And just to mention one other metric, the, uh, if you have uh, uh, the color point of a light source directly on the black body locus, then it will be perceived as the most natural white light. Obviously, if you look at the uh, chromaticity chart, if it's veering towards uh, uh, above the black body locus, it'll have a greenish tinge. So another metric is DUV, the, the uh, uh, closeness of the color point to the black body locus. The closer, the better. This is a picture of my tabletop at home. I think the projection isn't too good, but um, uh, this is my tabletop bit with a 3,000 Kelvin source. <laughs> and uh, this one uh, 4,000 Kelvin. And uh, actually I'm gonna play a trick on you. If you keep this picture in mind and just wait to see what's coming up in a couple of slides time. A third metric is it's quite all right for a manufacturer to, to um, uh, uh, specify a color point, but um, to what tolerance can they produce that color point? And here the industry uses uh, uh, so-called macadam ellipses, after David Macadam, a Scotsman, that uh, uh, did the research in the 1940s, properly known as standard deviations of colour matching. And you see that around each uh, target colour point on the black body locus, there's a series of ellipses. One ellipse is one step. So one standard deviation of people in a population will see a uh, just noticeable difference. So roughly 68%. Uh, and two, two steps and three, then more or less 100% of people will see a just noticeable difference and uh, you shouldn't really spec a light source uh, uh, beyond that. I think it's fine in a, uh, 
uh, for interior lighting with uh, uh, lots of different colours in it. But if you're if it's accent lighting on a white wall, you should stick to one or two uh, uh, macadam ellipses. You'll notice, by the way, the, the shape of the ellipse that um, uh, the human eye is more sensitive above and below the black body locus. This is the point of this metric. It's far more robust than saying plus or minus, uh, uh, let's say, 50 Kelvin, because the human eye is less sensitive going along the black body locus. Now I move from color appearance to color rendering. So instead of the look and feel of the lit interior, we're now looking how are colours rendered of people or food or merchandise or pictures at an exhibition. And I jump straight to the most uh, uh, robust, the most accurate of the metrics, and this is TM30, Technical Memorandum, Technical Memorandum 30 from the IES. Uh, 2018 is the latest uh, uh, version, and uh, it's been adopted, or at least the fidelity metric has been adopted by the CIE with uh, 224, CIE 224. And what this does, it works in the same way as the standard that you're probably more uh, familiar with, which is uh, CIE 13.3, I think, which is the color rendering index, which takes eight, or you can add uh, some supplementary colors to 15, uh, uh, color evaluation samples defined by uh, 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 reflectance curves. And then you see how does a test source render those colors, look at the chromaticity coordinates, compared to, to a reference source, which is a, a black body radiator of the same uh, uh, color temperature, so you get no CCT bias. And then if you take the average, this gives you uh, uh, a good uh, approximation of uh, uh, the, the, the accuracy, it's saying nothing about preference, just the accuracy of uh, uh, color rendering. Well, what I like about TM30, or one of many things, is that instead of eight or 15 color evaluation samples, there's um, uh, 99, so it's, it's, it's more accurate. And uh, also, these are real world uh, uh, color evaluation samples, paints, fabrics, plastics, and so on. So uh, it's, if, uh, it's not just, uh, let's say, a circle of colors like in CIE 13.3, equidistant in hue, it's, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's real world colors. And it's a, a mix, so it's a complete average. If you want to be precise about, let's say, skin tones, then you can look, and, uh, look at color evaluation samples 15 and 18, I think it is, uh, uh, from, uh, from memory. So you see plotted here, by the way, this is in 8 prime, B prime uh, uh, color space, a more uniform one, uh, uh, the 99 uh, uh, test colors, and uh, 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 next to them the, the uh, reference colors, and uh, the average distance uh, uh, between the two gives you the, uh, the, fidelity, the fidelity metric. Remember, this is nothing about uh, uh, color preference, and Actually, another metric is given within TM30, which does uh, uh, broach this ground, and this is the, uh, um, uh, uh, the, gamma, the gamma metric, and uh, this is, uh, it's, it's not time for me to go into complete detail, but I recommend this link, and you will get the, the, the slides, which goes into detail. But very basically, related to the same 99 color evaluation samples, they're plotted in uh, 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 probability space, and you'll see that the black one, it's, it's normalized to make a circle, the black circle is the uh, um, uh, reference illuminant, and the red one is the, uh, the test illuminant. So if the two circles are superimposed, as you see here, then you know that the light is going to be a perfectly natural one. So in the case of 3000 Kelvin, it will look like a halogen lamp, and the colors will appear as you would uh, uh, expect. Then the same piece of cloth, here you, see, you notice the blues, uh, uh, purpley colors, uh, uh, more enhanced in this one. And you could tell that's gonna happen because you can see in that area of the spectrum, the red circle is uh, beyond the, uh, uh, the black circle. If it would have been inside, then you know there's some desaturation going on. So there's a link between saturation and preference. Indeed, if you look at this link, then you'll see a 10-minute film based on some research done at um, PNNL, I think, which <coughs> has a general 
Monte Carlo interior, and preference tests were carried out with participants, and actually they preferred a source with uh, fidelity metric in the mid-80s compared to one in the mid-90s. Why? Because this particular one, as you can see, probably you can't see, but I can just about see, there is some uh, saturation in the red. The human eye has a, uh, a propensity to, to, to red saturation. So here's the first of the links, which I mentioned, that a source which is more efficient and cheaper actually is the preferred uh, source. So don't, you know, it's not, uh, uh, they, they overlap. Now I tackle the subject of uh, uh, longevity. This used to be quite simple with uh, incandescent or halogen lamps. Uh, it failed after 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 uh, uh, hours, depending on the technology. And, uh, you know, it's a catastrophic fa failure. It's over. The, the coil, coil was uh, filament. Was broken. And issues like uh, lumen depreciation or color point drift were, were hardly relevant. But with LEDs, if you look after them thermally anyway, then you won't get uh, catastrophic failures. And now these issues of uh, lumen depreciation and uh, color point stability these are the ones that define useful life. And I recommend get uh, uh, LMAT certified laboratory to, to give you independent, uh, um, uh, 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 an independent report for uh, um, lumen depreciation and uh, um, uh, color point drift. And this would be done at the, uh, 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 the relevant case temperature and, and operating current or more, of course. And normally this is at 6,000 hours or 10,000 hours. So you can see with this one, it's one step DUV uh, uh, sustained. This is more or less one mechanical ellipse, as I was saying earlier. And the lumen depreciation is pretty good. It's quite normal to go up a bit then down, by the way. Normally the one that's overlooked is color point uh, uh, drift to, to the, uh, you know, this can be to the detriment of the look and feel of the space. Uh, um, these are some pictures I've taken on my travels. The top one is uh, halogen. So if you spot replace uh, one brand with another, they use different uh, dichroic filters and you can get this. This was, uh, this is near here. If any of you are going, uh, um, uh, returning home via Green Park tube station, you'll pass this uh, shop, I forget what it's called. And they still haven't replaced, these are poor quality LEDs. After one year, the phosphor degraded. <laughs> it's, it's not a hint of green, it's green. <coughs> and this is a, a bakery that used uh, white song lamps and they'd been left in uh, too long. And uh, no slight on the technology, simply uh, if you leave a white song lamp in too, too, too long, the sodium migrates. Okay, so that's longevity. The next topic is uh, efficiency. And this, of course, is uh, the ratio of uh, uh, lumens, light, coming out of the light source, compared to the consumed uh, wattage, lumens per watt. And, of course, the uh, headline uh, um, outcome is that the higher the efficacy, then the lower the energy consumption and uh, electricity bill. Of course, it's not just related to the light source, also the efficiency of the optic and uh, the luminaire or even the installation, if you should be looked at with uh, Lenny. But remember my sub-theme, which is that all the attributes are interlinked. If you have a more efficient uh, uh, source, then the heat sinking requirements are less. And if you have a smaller heat sink, you have a, a more discrete luminaire. Think of track spots which are fully exposed, then this becomes uh, uh, highly relevant. Secondly, it means you can efficiently make very warm light sources. Previously with LEDs, when high brightness LEDs came out in uh, around the year 2000, uh, uh, the pumps, it's kind of, just things are white LEDs, so it's a blue, it, it gives gallium nitride and phosphorus uh, on top. If you want a really warm colour, like 2200 Kelvin, candle-like, which you see there, then you need more red phosphor. The red phosphor's uh, uh, far less efficient, and uh, to do this efficiently, then you need more, you know, a more efficient uh, pump. By the way, you thought this was warm before, now we've put uh, 2,200 Kelvin. That's the, uh, the trick. 
And then finally, if you want very narrow beams, uh, um, you know, less than 10 degrees, then this is hard unless you have a very small light emitting surface as close as possible to, to, to a point source. And with LEDs, this is, um, uh, it's hard to get such a point source because uh, uh, efficiency goes down, the, the extraction efficiency is uh, worse. But as the pump gets more efficient, then you can have these kind of uh, narrow beams with, uh, with LEDs. So it's all interlinked. Uh, related to that topic is form factor. So I give two extreme, uh, uh, two extremes in terms of application. Here in a white goods store, you want a, a bright, even wash of light, so wall washing. And uh, this was the particular luminaire used from uh, from Alphabet. And you need uh, a linear source for this. And here, exactly the opposite. This is a, a boutique in. Um, New Bond Street, and they wanted a very warm light with very narrow uh, uh, scalloping on the walls. And uh, here, of course, you need, uh, as per my last slide, uh, uh, as close to a point source as possible. Notice again, by interlinking of themes, I bring back color temperature. Can you imagine, uh, in such a white goods store, having um, uh, uh, you know a very warm color source? It would look strange, people would think the prices are sky high. Or if you have 4,000 Kelvin in a boutique, it's just odd, you know, you think you're in a, uh, a science fiction film or something. So it's, it's uh, picking the right uh, 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 specification points for the application. And then we come to uh, control gear. So electrically speaking, an LED is a, uh, is a diode and it needs a regulated and limited uh, current. And this is usually done by uh, um, uh, a driver, which in turn gets its uh, power from, uh, from a power supply. Now, the norm in the industry has been that electronics companies combine these two, and it's called a uh, 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 constant current driver. But in some circumstances, it can be better if the driver is integrated with a LED array, <coughs> then you have a constant voltage uh, uh, source. If you have, for example, uh, one uh, uh, light source, it can make sense always to, to have a constant current driver. But let's say you have a recessed multi-head gimbal, something like that, and you've got four of these, then why repeat this four times? In that instance, it would make sense to have one power supply and four constant voltage sources. No right or wrong, uh, application specific. With this slide, I don't want to steal my own thunder because it's a um, presentation I give in the afternoon. But again, when it comes to integration of functions, some uh, uh, light source modules have Bluetooth or other uh, uh, wireless connectivity integrated within it. So for my final slide, I hope I've shown how all these uh, attributes interlink. Initial price is an important um, uh, attribute. Uh, uh, but shouldn't be taken in isolation, in my humble opinion. And yet when I hear uh, uh, the expression value engineering, it does seem to hone in invariably on this one attribute. Whether it's, uh, you know, maybe CapEx, NOPEX, or different budgets, but isn't efficacy always important? Isn't it always important to look at the uh, color rendering and color point attributes and make certain they're right for the uh, uh, application? Look at the integration level. Has it got control gear included within a source? Are you comparing apples with apples? So my final message is that, uh, of course, initial price is important, but it isn't the, uh, the be-all and end-all. Okay.